Now, what this paper shows is that zero-point energy can actually explain gravity. He references Sakharov in this paper and says, Sakharov was correct. We can actually take the idea of electromagnetism going back to Einstein's equations, and we can show that this is a consistent answer to cosmology. It doesn't just invalidate Einstein's equations, it adds to it. It says there's this extra layer of zero-point energy that explains mass, gravity, and inertia. This one's specifically about gravity. It also says that we cannot shield against gravity. Why can we not shield against gravity? Because the zero-point energy, even if I make a Faraday box, right here, you can't shield the gravity out of it because it's all, the zero-point energy is already inside when I'm making the box. That's the reason why we can't shield from it. And he also says then, well, we can explain gravity from a classical sense. We say we've got this ocean of energy and anything we put on top of it, it bends that as well. But then we're saying, well, this zero-point energy also adds to that equation. So we could theoretically remove some of that zero-point energy and we could take our ground state and we could lower it. This is the basis for one of Hal Pudoff's future papers about polarizable vacuum. The last bit is the Zitra Buagong. That was a word I had never heard of a couple years ago. The Zitra Buagong is essentially the vibration of the zero point energy all the time. So we imagine we're in this medium. We don't feel it, but it's there. I mean, we feel the air around us, we feel the water around us, but we don't really feel the zero point energy around us. But that zero point energy is constantly vibrating a little bit. So if we can also vibrate, then we might be able to interact with it. So really great papers that everybody should check out. Hal Pudoff seems to be the kind of the guy connected to all of this stuff. And then enter Ken Shoulders. Ken Shoulders, the big revelation from Ken Shoulders from reading his personal uh, papers and documents is that he realized that the ether existed in 1980. He realized the ether existed and when he realized that he said, oh, I should be able to make a stable ball of plasma if that's the case. And he did. He called them exotic vacuum objects because he believed these plasma balls must be cohering energy from the vacuum, from the zero point energy field. He created non-equilibrium cold plasmas, which is relevant because if you watch my interviews with the US Navy engineer Salvatore Pais, he said that that's the secret, cold non-equilibrium plasmas. And then who is he working with? Hal Pudoff and Bill Church. It was the financier of Church's Chicken. And now here's a clip from Ken Shoulders talking about, let's close this one out, talking about teleportation and zero, and, and EDO. Your name's not the view off that's good, and it'd probably be the thing that does it for you. If you say out of gravity, Propulsion properties are just incredible. It will be able to push anything you want, anywhere you want. It enshrouds stuff. This is all written on some of these things on the web. When it enshrouds things, it can allow them to disappear. It does make atoms disappear in laboratory work. Well, that's interesting, you know, because when they disappear, I can transport all this stuff through somewhere else and it reappears. That's teleportation. So it does that very nicely. It's an energy source, just incredible. We can forget all of our energy problems. We can forget all of our propulsion problems. What's the positive things? Well, guys, I think I would say Yahtzee at that point. So Ken Shoulders right there is saying that these EVOs can teleport things. He's talking about them disappearing atoms, shrouding atoms. This is very, very similar to the idea of quantum entanglement and some of the experiments that they've been doing um, with Bose-Einstein condensates as well. So there's the man himself explaining these EVOs can be used for power generation. They can be used for propulsion. They can be used for what we would consider to be probably anti-gravity. Um, but potentially unlimited applications. Now, in the early 90s, another thing came along, which was called the Marauder Project from 1993, accelerating plasma toroids, similar to spheromax, meaning that these would have created a sphere-like shape using a toroidal structure. They had multiple different applications, and how big were they? A meter across. A meter. This is a giant plasma ball. This is not just some tiny little thing that you see on some of these YouTube videos. So this whole Marauder pro project just goes dark. 
presumably because it was either too successful or I, I'm not exactly sure. So you can find here, I actually found one of the scientific papers from the time, compact toroidal uh, formation, compression, and acceleration. And it's very light on details exactly what they were going to use this for. But once you started to see, you know, balls of light floating around in the sky, you can imagine that this would be the precursor for some of these plasma ball UFO things that we're seeing. And don't worry, we have some more papers that are going to put this all together here for you guys. I just want to give you guys the timeline of, look, we're looking at the 90s now. Clearly, they were interested in this concept of, you know, spherical plasma balls. And then this paper, Force-Free Time Harmonic Plasmoids from 1992 by Jack Nechamkin. Uh, this paper is big because Jack Nechamkin was the author. He was working for the Air Force Research Labs. And the project manager is a guy that everybody needs to get familiar with named Frank Mead. Frank Mead is going to show up many, many times in these papers. The idea here was to either use vortical motion to stabilize your plasma ball. So the whole basis of this was try to manipulate the electric and magnetic fields so that you could create a stable structure. So now we're incorporating the idea of using electromagnetism in a clever way with fluid flow to manipulate the fields of your magnetic structure. And so this is like, okay, now at this point, we're looking at it going, how can we manipulate our plasma to create our stable ball of plasma, like a drone or whatever we want to do with it, to get it to float around? <clears throat> now, this paper, Extracting Energy and Heat from the Vacuum, Hal Pudoff was working on zero-point energy all through the 90s, and he was bringing in some other people. In this case, it was Daniel Cole was the person he brought in. And this paper was essentially just showing that if we extract energy from the quantum vacuum, from the... Uh, from the ether, from the zero-point energy field, it doesn't violate the laws of thermodynamics. Now, this is huge, because when you guys start talking about free energy, everybody comes at you with the first and second law of thermodynamics. They say, energy can't be created or destroyed. That's true. Conservation is huge in physics. And then the second one they say is, there's no system that can be perfectly efficient. 